the formation of cyclic acetals as protecting groups. In the last lesson, we dealt with the formation of both hemiacetals and acetals. And this lesson, we'll see one specific application for forming cyclic acetals and how they can be a protecting group for either a ketone or aldehyde in the presence of a strong nucleophile. Now, this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing them weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. And if you find this lesson useful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. And if you're looking for the study guides that go with it or practice problems on ketones and aldehydes, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. All right, so now we'll take a look at that special case where we form a cyclic acetal. When we use a diol, like this is uh, commonly called ethylene glycol, and we'll do it with an acid catalyst so we can go all the way to acetal formation. And uh, in this case, I'm not gonna show the mechanism because it's really the same, or at least analogous to the same mechanism we've been covering, but I will show the intermediate here. So you've added it to one side, you still have the OH, but in acid, you can protonate that OH and have it leave, making room for the other side to come in and attach. And so here you're gonna form that cyclic acetal. And it turns out in forming this cyclic acetal, the equilibrium constant for forming this is much more favorable than when we just used two equivalents of a regular alcohol. And the idea is that we form this, again, we're also gonna form some water here. So, but if you look at the number of reactants and products, so here we've got two reactants, the ketone and the diol, two products. And so from an entropy perspective, it's two versus two, it's, it's entropy neutral. But when you did this before with just a regular alcohol, you'd actually have one ketone and then two equivalents of the alcohol, three reactants, to just form two products, an acetal and water. And so it'd be entropically unfavorable. And so as a result, with this now being entropy neutral, it's a better reaction, a more favorable reaction for forming the product here, the acetal, than a normal acetal. And again, we said that the equilibrium constant for forming a normal acetal from a ketone is not good, but for forming a cyclic acetal, it's actually great. You can actually get a really good yield of this. So and it turns out this reaction is also reversible, just like normal acetal formation, by just using H3O+. And it turns out that's going to be synthetically useful to us. So if you look at a typical ketone or aldehyde, you're supposed to look at this, and with your now uh, O-chem wisdom, you're supposed to look at this and be like, oh, look at that carbonyl carbon. He's a good electrophile. Totally true. So, but it turns out this guy right here, you might be like, well, Chad, that guy's bonded to two auctions. Isn't he a good electrophile? And it turns out, no. He might still have a fair amount of partial positive charge, but notice now he's also sp3 hybridized. And if you're going to attack an sp3 carbon with a nucleophile, you've got to do backside attack. And that's relatively blocked here. Not going to happen. He's not bonded to any hydrons. He's fairly substituted. Can't do backside attack here. And so you look at this guy and like, he's a good electrophile. And you look at this guy, not so much. A nucleophile looks at a ketone and says, <whistles> nucleophile looks at the cyclic acetal and just keeps on walking. Doesn't find it attractive at all. So that's what's going on here. And what's nice is it's also reversible. So where would this be important? Let's give an example. So let's say we've got both a ketone and an aldehyde. So, and let's just say we add a nucleophile. And one of the nucleophiles you learned how to add in the past was a Grignard reagent. So when we talked about synthesizing alcohols, and we'll bring this up again in this chapter, but let's say we add a methyl Grignard followed by our acid workup step. And let's just say we add only one equivalent of that Grignard. Well, if I had excess, one equivalent gets to react with the ketone and one with the aldehyde. But if I only add one equivalent, then it only gets to react with whichever one's more reactive. Well, we learned that aldehydes are more reactive than ketones, so it's only going to get to react here. And so in this case, if you recall, think of your Grignard as a carbon anion here. And so in this case, it's a methyl anion. And it's just going to come in and do a nucleophilic attack, push the electrons up to the oxygen, and then the oxygen's going to get protonated in the acid workup step. This is what we end up with. So this hydrogen is still there. It's still attached right here. It's just not drawn in since it's not an aldehyde anymore. We don't typically draw hydrogens bonded to carbons except for aldehydes. So it's still there. So, but we've added the methyl group here. It's now attached to that carbon as well. And then the oxygen has been protonated to be an alcohol. So, and our ketone was left alone. So aldehyde was more reactive as an electrophile. So our nucleophile reacted preferentially with it. However, what if we had wanted for it to have been the ketone that reacted and the aldehyde to have been left alone. Well, 
what if this had been the product we were after? So addition of the Grignard reagent to the ketone carbonyl and the aldehyde is left alone. Well, the problem is, is under the conditions we've shown, not going to happen. And so this is evidence that you need to use this protecting group here that we've talked about here. What you want to do is first protect the more reactive group, in this case, the aldehyde. And so what we'll do is before we add the Grignard, we will add one equivalent of our ethylene glycol with acid catalyst. And since we're only adding one equivalent, it's only going to get to protect one of these two groups, whichever one's more reactive, in this case, the aldehyde. And so as a result, ketone's still there, but our aldehyde is now protected from nucleophilic attack as part of that cyclic acetal. And so now we'll go ahead add our Grignard reagent, and that Grignard reagent looks at the cyclic acetal, says you're unreactive to me, you're not an electrophile, so, but you, sir, the ketone, are a good electrophile and comes and reacts. And so this is going to form an alkoxide with our methyl group attached there. We still have this protected aldehyde. And you might recall that typically we follow up our Grignard again with an acid workup step. So we're going to add H3O plus. And that H3O plus is going to turn two purposes here. It's going to prop protonate here this alkoxide to turn it into an alcohol. That's going to happen. But recall that it's H3O plus that converts your cyclic acetal back into a ketone or aldehyde. And so that's going to serve both purposes here. It protonates the alkoxide to get it to an OH, but also removes the protecting group back off, converting it back into an aldehyde, and we've now formed our product. And so this would be a, a very real case where you'd want to protect the aldehyde so that only the less reactive ketone gets to react. And typically we'll do this with, you know, a reaction with strong nucleophiles when you've got both a ketone and an aldehyde present, like a Grignard or an acetylide ion, something along those lines.